<clears throat> Scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 2 through 16. And I will also be reading Genesis chapter 2, 18 through 24. Some Pharisees came to test him and they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house of the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if he divorces her husband, she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, and he laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. <coughs> Genesis 2, 18 through 24. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of, and of the field and bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, to every animal, animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of a man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> this is a very delicate subject to talk about. There are several voices that speak to this. One says a man should not divorce his wife except where he has found her in a case for scandal. As it is said, because he has found her in a case of scandalous thing, Deuteronomy 24.1. Another school says he may divorce his wife even if she has burned his supper. As it is said, because he has found her in a scandalous thing, Deuteronomy 24.1. And the rabbi says he may divorce his wife, even if he has found another more becoming than she, as it is said, and if she does not find favor in his eyes, Deuteronomy 24 more. As you can see, we can find any excuse that we can come up with to make it acceptable for one to do that. <clears throat> now, I challenge us to think, and I know for the most part, we speak, preach to the choir, and I know that we don't all have uh, control of all aspects of this situation in our lives and whether or not it might have transpired in the past, but to, to know that God has forgiven. And God is moving on, and we are to move on and remember that this is God's plan for us from this moment forward as we recognize this. Marriage is a institution that God created. 
much the same as some other institutions that the church calls sacraments. One of which we are going to partake of later on this morning. One of which is baptism. Those things are tools that God has given us as a means of connecting with Him. So let's understand that marriage too is a sacrament. Baptism is only supposed to happen once in our life because it's a covenant between us and God. And as long as one individual in that covenant does not fail to uphold their bargain in that covenant, that covenant remains intact. And so that's why the Methodist Church believes that baptism is a one and done kind of thing because God will never fail to uphold His end of it. Marriage. Marriage is a, uh, a thing that is challenging. Why? Because it's, it's two separate individuals that are coming together and as God puts it in His Word that we become one when we are married. And so we, do we really recognize that we are one when we are married? I know that I look around the room and I know of individuals who have had very extended marriages and married for 50 years, 50 years, 60 years. We know that uh, not long ago we celebrated what would have been 66 years for Judy and her husband. And I know there are many others. Some who've been married for a short period of time. Some who've been married for a very extended period of time. Some who have suffered loss in their marriage. What is marriage to us when it comes to God? Well, if you open up the book of Revelation, you see that marriage is in the book of Revelation. And the church is what? What is the church in the book of Revelation? But the bride of Christ. So we, as the church, are the bride of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, so there are, there's a relationship that goes on in marriage. We learn how to grow closer together through this bondage of marriage. <clears throat> Maybe the bondage isn't exactly the right word. Sometimes we might feel like bondage is what it is, but it's not. It's a bond that's being formed. And as we draw closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have a greater bond in that relationship. And there are struggles in relationship. God calls us to endure those struggles. We are human, and God realizes that we are human, and that's why Moses was given what he was given to share with the Israelites. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is a permanent relationship. And God wants us to do all we can to live out that same kind of relationship with one another. In marriage, in friendship, within the church, outside of the church. All of our relationships, God wants us to be in that kind of a, a bond. To be connected with one another. With our family. You know, <clears throat> I came across this story about Jack Benny. How many of us here know Jack Benny? You heard of Jack Benny? Yeah, I think a good portion of us have heard of Jack Benny. Well, I read this, <clears throat> that Jack Benny 
when he died, on the very next day, his wife received a single red rose from a florist, came hand delivered that rose. On the next day, she received another one, and then another one, and then another one, and about a week later she began to wonder, so who is this secret admirer that I have that's sending me a rose every day now that Jack is gone? So she got herself together and she went down to the florist and she said, I want to know who's sending me these roses that I'm getting every day. <clears throat> and so the florist said, Jack Benny had come in and sat down with me and had a conversation and he said that upon my death I want my wife to receive a rose every day until she passes. And he, he paid for that in advance. He set that up in advance. That she might receive a rose every single day for the rest of her life for her to remember how much Jack loved her. Does that not remind us of the love another has for us? That our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ put himself on the cross, gave up his life for us that we might have eternal life, that we might spend all of eternity with him, and that each and every day from the day we recognize that he has done this for us, that we can recognize his love how deep it runs, how powerful it is that our Lord and Savior has done this for us. Doesn't it make us feel warm and fuzzy? Doesn't it make us feel wonderful knowing that our Lord and Savior has loved us so much? Doesn't it make us desire to help others see how Jesus Christ loved them so much? A daily reminder. Whenever I get in my car, the radio station that plays in my car is one that plays uplifting Christian music. You might ask why. Why do I listen to that? And that's pretty much the only thing I listen to. I don't know about you, but I know there's a lot of difficulty in our world, and it's sometimes difficult to maintain that positive outlook on life when you have so much negativity all around you. I avoid the news like the plague because it seems that they just spew out negative information. We just spread so much hate. It's getting harder and harder even on social media to avoid that. And so I need that uplifting Christian music every time I get in the car. Now, I listen to contemporary Christian music, but that doesn't mean that has to be what you listen to. You can listen to whatever you want to listen to, but whatever you choose, be careful that you choose something that elevates you and doesn't bring you down. Something that instills love and grace and mercy and those kind of things in your heart, not judgment. Or some other negative aspect of life. What did God call Eve? A helper. As husbands and wives, our job together is to be our, each other's helper, to help each other along the way. 
And I know sometimes that uh, that road can get rough. I know I just preached a message on it seems like the longer you're a Christian, the longer you have faith, the more difficult things become. And isn't it wonderful to have somebody beside you all along that way that says, I got you. I'm going to help you. I know that life is rough. It's not fair. And so God created that institution from the beginning because God knew we needed each other. God knew that we needed more than just the Lone Ranger. And it's not just our marriage, but it's our church. Our friends of faith that help us along the way. We need each other as the church. We need each other as spouses. And we need each other as our Lord and Savior and us as the bride of Christ. So that we can endure the, the wiles of the devil to get us through this world. Let's pray. Gracious and mighty God, we are so thankful that you had the foreknowledge to plan marriage.